Okay, welcome to the third video tutorial of Glee 2D in which uh, I'm going to show you how to actually use the levels created with the editor in your own XNA game application. Um, it doesn't have to be XNA since the levels are exported in plain XML format. Uh, however, XNA is only used as an example here. Okay, so um, I'm going to start a new XNA game application from scratch inside Visual Studio. Let's call it Glit 2D test. Okay. So we have the standard game class template here from the XNA game studio. When we start it we have our cornflower blue window that we all know. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add the textures um, that will be used in my levels into the content pipeline. So that's why I'm go I will create a folder which I will call textures here. And now let me take the textures which I have here and add them to the textures folder so this way they get uh, included here in the content pipeline. Okay, the second thing is I'm going to add the source file that is included in the download with download of the editor which is called level.cs uh, which is a an example implementation of how to use uh, the levels with uh, XNA Game Studio written in C Sharp. So I'll do this here. Add existing item. Okay, here it is, level.cs. Okay, let's have a brief look at the file. So, what's in there? We have the level class, which has a name and a visibility flag as everything. Uh, and basically a list of layers. So as we saw in the editor, a uh, level basically is a list of layers. Okay, And also a level can have custom properties, which is a serializable dictionary, which uh, is just um, an ordinary dictionary from .NET, um, where functionality for serialization and deserialization has been added. You can find the implementation uh, on the bottom of the file. So that was the level. Then we have the layer, which basically is the same thing. It has a name, a visibility flag, and it has a list of items. So the items, uh, what are the items? We have a base class item, uh, which has a name, a visibility flag, and a position in world space, because every item has a position in the level, and eventually custom properties, which is the same thing. And we have four uh, derived classes, uh, the texture item and the three primitive items, uh, rectangle, circle and paths. Okay, so texture item uh, has, in addition to the position, it has a rotation, scale and so forth, whatever uh, there is for textures. And the rectangle item has only width, height and fill color that could be used circle item same thing radius okay down here is the stuff needed for serialization we have the custom property wrapper class uh, which can hold any custom property that has been added by you through the editor so its value is of type object and the type is also uh, available so that you can check it before you cast it for example so this is the custom property and finally we have the serializable dictionary which only is a dictionary with key type string and value type custom property that we saw here and it only is here to implement uh, IXML serializable so that it can be it can read and write XML okay nothing special so you don't need to worry about it actually you, I just wanted to give you a brief overview so in order to use it, notice that it has uh, it all is in a namespace called Glee2D, 
and that's why the first thing I'm gonna do is add using fleet 2d in my game one uh, file and now I can use the level okay so I have a level inside my game one class and I'm going to load my level here in the initialize function and there is a static uh, method inside the level class which is called from file okay so you have to provide it a file name and a content manager the file name could be level1.xml and the content manager uh, is needed for loading the textures since uh, we want to use the content pipeline for loading the textures okay so I'll give it the default uh, content manager which is just called content which is already there uh, provided uh, by the template it's actually this content manager here okay so uh, we'll check that in a minute so let's assume the level loading uh, was successful then we can just draw the level here in our draw function so sprite batch begin level draw it needs a sprite batch obviously and sprite batch and okay that's it now um, let's look a bit um, here first of all uh, right now there is uh, no file called level1.xml and this file is going to be looked for right next to the executable of our game okay so um, let's create this file now uh, with a new instance of our editor so I have the editor here now there is some preparation that needs to be done okay first of all um, when you create a new level it has a property called content root folder this is an absolute path to the to a folder which should be set to the content root directory of your game project why because uh, when you later add textures to your level and save the level uh, the, te the file names for the textures of each item are going to be saved as relative paths to this content root folder of the level. So only the level has uh, an absolute path here and each texture only knows where it lies relative to this path here. Okay. So if you want to uh, handle uh, texture loading, uh, the level content root folder should be set to the content root directory of your game project. This also enables you to save the level files wherever you want on your computer and open them up from wherever you want. Okay, since the level knows where to start searching for the textures. Okay, so um, by the way, um, each time you create a new level, this is set to the default content root folder, which is a setting can change it here in the settings so you have the default content root folder which is applied to every new level okay so since I'm planning to um, create multiple levels for my game of course uh, it's a good idea to set this initially here in your settings when you start your game project so let's uh, set it accordingly so this is my content folder okay Okay, and now when I create a new level, click on it, content root folder will be set to my game project's content root folder. Okay, so that's why I see these three folders here. So these two are uh, are there by default from Axena Game Studio, and here is my newly created textures folder where I put my textures in. Okay, so now I can start making uh, my levels.